no Lowry, no Van Vliet, no Siakam. No problem for the Toronto Raptors on this night. A dominant win over the Cleveland Cavaliers on a career night from Gary Trent Jr. 135-115 is your final. Raps record now 21-32 and 32 on the year. Hello, everyone, and welcome inside Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Sherman Hamilton, Paul Jones, and Leo Routens. Leo, I'm going to start with you. Raptors forced to make another lineup change. Uh, just, you know, guys in and out of the lineup. I don't think anyone expected a start like this, though. Are you kidding me? I mean, what were you expecting? I mean, I think we all walked in here tonight going, Raptors are going to light it up without Kyle, without Fred, without Pascal. They dropped, a, you know, 47 in the first quarter. You know, I don't know why you're so surprised. I mean, but really? Come on. No, that was uh, that was crazy. I mean, you, you really think about it. The Raptors just came out, and, and I, you could just tell something was up early. The defense, you know, the way they were attacking, they had a nice rhythm. Everybody was involved in the game early, and it just kept going. And you mentioned Gary Trent. What a night. And 44 points. And, uh, you know, guys, we've seen a lot of guys put up some numbers, but when you drop 44 on 17 of 19, you're rolling. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heck of a night right there. Jonesy, did you expect this? You, you know, come on. You've seen a lot no, of basketball I, in your day. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. But I will say, though, you know, to Leo's point, once you get it going like that, and, you know, we talk about the, we a lot lately. We talk about those nights, right, where you have, like, they had one against Golden State. They had one against them with the Lakers where it either goes, you know, perfectly or deathly wrong. Mm -hmm. And you start a game like that, you ask Sherm, ask Leo, they probably experienced it. I, I, me, only a few times, but these guys more so. You get that feeling that night, you go, hey, man, let's, what's your line, Leo? Feed the fire? Like, feed the know, fire. You know, and, and I think it got, it got contagious, Randall. I, I, one guy makes a shot, another guy makes a shot. It, it, they start moving the ball. Now that fuels their defense at the other end. Guys are a little more engaged, a little more energized. You get you, you score 47 in, in, in the first quarter. You score 40. It's a career uh, uh, franchise high, 87 in the half. And you're thinking, all right, mm -hmm. we got this rolling. But we know the Raptors. And shorthanded, we knew there was going to be a blackout. And they gave some of it back. But I, I didn't expect it to come, come out like this. But... I was expecting a better effort from them tonight, and, and, I, and I think we saw that. And Sherm, it's pretty rare when you have the entire team going, right? Like, you can have two, three, sometimes four guys going at once, and it's usually a good night. But when you have everybody, like, that doesn't happen very often in basketball. Uh, no, it doesn't. But, I mean, again, the guys on the floor were none of the main guys that needed their touches, that needed their possession. So everybody had a chance and equal opportunity to get looks and to make plays. And Gary Trent Jr. just took a chokehold on it and said, I want to take care of this myself tonight. But it's one of those feel good games, you know, a game where everybody's involved. Everybody gets to score. Touches are for everybody. And then everybody's committed defensively to work hard. So you have those games, you, you enjoy those games, you understand, to your point, Herbs, this doesn't happen very often, so you got to take it while it happens. And I just thought that a game like this gets everybody reengaged, gets everybody focused, and it gets you believing that, you know, the next 19 games, there's some real possibilities there for the Raptors. Mm -hmm. And Leo, let's just talk about Gary Trent Jr. a little bit more, because, you know, he, he just puts a big night seemingly every night now for the Raptors. And everybody knew he could, you know, make the three. Everybody knew he he was a good player. But did you know he was this potent, especially inside the three-point line? Like, it feels like he's got a, a bigger repertoire of plays than, than we knew about. Well, I, I don't think anybody really knows what somebody's going to do with opportunity until they get it. Um, you know, I've always liked him. Uh, and to be honest with you, what I, what I love most about him was his toughness defensively and, and watching him play with Portland and, and in the playoffs and, and how he just got into people, got into LeBron James. Uh, I, I, that impressed me. I, that, that's something that I had in my head. Um, I knew he could knock down some open shots. I liked the fact he always took good shots every time I saw him, always on balance. Mm -hmm. Now he gets the opportunity to open it up a little bit, and it's really impressive. Uh, he still, for the most part, takes on balance good shots, but he knows how to seek his shots out. He knows how to find them. He knows how to get to his spots. And, you know, one of the things I think we all agreed on when he got here was that when you, if you could play with C.J. McCollum, 
Damian Lillard and Carmelo Anthony and find your shots. And he's had some pretty good games there. You can play with anybody. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we're seeing that he really understood how to, how to get his, and now he's got an opportunity where his is a lot more. Guys, I would say this, even though he, we knew he was a good shooter coming here. I'm impressed with his ball handling ability, yes, the way that yeah. he creates space, the way that he manufactures shots and the way that he just needs enough space to get a shot off sometimes because he's on balance and he's squared. I, I didn't know he had a handle that could get his shot off that effectively and that consistently, but he's really impressed me with his, his dribble moves to create space. He's, he's one of the, he, you could see he's got a bit of that Carmelo teaching in him, you know, the old school physical offensive scores. You hit first, you create the space, you create the contact, and then you go into your shot. That's how Carmelo plays. And then I'm seeing him do this, and I'm like, I'm impressed with that handle and how he gets it done. Uh, you know, you know the thing that impressed me tonight, Randall? We talk about a career night from, from Gary Trent Jr. How about the career night from Malachi Flynn yeah. in points and assists? And you know what? And, and before, you know, we kind of let our, our viewers in on this, we were talking about it before we fired up the camera that the Raptors gave some of it back in that third quarter, and it was a time when – they didn't have anybody on the floor to organize them. I thought Malachi did a great job in the fourth quarter when he came in, did a little scoring, distributing the ball, getting them into sets, and all of a sudden threw water on whatever Cleveland had going. And I just, I, I, I love the way this young man is growing with his confidence. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could see the smart. You could see him, the play that he made on the clear path foul to me, that scream, that's a Kyle Lowry play. That's a Fred Van Vliet play. I know I'm going to be fouled. Let me float the ball over. Get, get it out of my hands. The pass is gone. The foul is going to be after. That's an awareness. And, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, some guys are wired like that. And I get that from this kid. And I, I just love the way he played at the start of the fourth quarter. And he's always thinking, how about the alley-oop that went bad with Chris Boucher? Boucher lays it down to him like, hey, man, I'm playing point guard. And Malachi's, well, I'm going to give it back to you for the lob. And he floats it right over the hoop. And he looks at Chris like, dude, what are you, man, I was trying to, I was trying to give you some sugar. But his thinking, his confidence, his comfort level, Randall, as an NBA point guard is coming and it's growing. And I love what Malachi Flynn did tonight. Hey, hey guys, can I throw out a name that we're probably not going to talk about or plan to talk I know about? You're go- I know where I know you're, where going. you're going to. DeAndre Bembry. Mr. Bembry. Yeah. Yeah. He came. He came out in this game, and that, that first quarter, there was nothing that he was not a part of. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was blocking shots. He was passing the basketball. He was scoring. He was all over the place. I mean, he was involved. In literally everything that happened. And and think about think about the Golden State game, this game, Denver game. He had big games in all three of those games. You know, he was, you know, and, and he was missed not having him against Chicago really hurt the Toronto Raptors. But I, I just love his energy. And when he's engaged like that, man, he makes a difference. And, and Sherm, Utah as well, right? Watanabe was, was great in this one. And I feel like he's really now 100% from that ankle injury. It takes, it takes games to get, even though you're back, you're not really back after an ankle injury until, you know, three, four games. Yeah, and, and Utah's game is about energy. It's about yeah. hustle. It's about constant motion. So, yeah, it's impressive to see what he does. You know, guys, Jonesy and, and Leo and I were on a call earlier in the season with uh, Raptors G League uh, head coach uh, Patrick Matumbo, mm-hmm. and we talked about Utah and what he liked about him. And he said he just loved his giving spirit. He's willing to do anything. He's, he's a guy who's going to just, whatever the team needs, whatever yeah. you want him to do, he's going to do it. And you see it in his play. He, he's, he's just all in. Everything he does is all in. And you, you love playing with teammates like that. He's going to run. He's going to defend. And there was a possession late in the game where I forgot who was handling the ball, trying to break him down. And two times tried to attack him off the dribble, mm-hmm. and he just bottled him up, both times moving his feet. Utah, we talk about offensive players with a great first step. Utah's first step defensively mm-hmm. is very quick. And it's very intuitive. He's got a great knack for getting to that spot before offensive players do, with size uh, yeah. and with presence. Sure, and, and, and I look at that, and it's his technique. Like, we, we take it for granted that guys don't always sit in their chair and get in a stance. And Utah does that. And, and with, his, with, his, with his height, he's able to give some space. And as you said, when the offensive player goes, man, that, that first foot is moving, and he cuts the guy off and forces him into his counter. 
Look, Randy, the other thing I wanted to say tonight is in limited minutes, I thought Freddie Gillespie fit in yeah. Yeah. really, really well. Made some nice passes, showed some good big man fundamentals. I, 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 again, it might have been, as, as Sherm said, one of those nights where, as you said, Randy, where everybody's going, and we'll see what he has the next night. But I was impressed with what I saw from him. And you know what, guys? I'm looking forward to Kim Birch putting on mm-hmm. a Raptor uniform because he's going to give some, some energy. He rebounds. He's tough. I, I, I like what he's going to be able to bring, too. And Nick Nurse knows his game. Yeah, Leo, just elaborate on that. What, what are Raptor fans and what is the Raptor team getting with a guy like Birch? He's an ultimate team guy, right? He's, uh, uh, he'll do everything for the team, just like we were talking about Utah, what he does. But Ken Birch understands his bread and butter is defense, right, and rebounding. And he's mm-hmm. going to get locked in on that. He's gonna, he does a great job. You know, Orlando was a better defensive team when he was in the game. You know, obviously with Vucevic, you get the offense, but the Orlando loved him when he was on a the team. They were able to do a lot of different things defensively. So uh, that's what the Raptors need, right? They need that big man that can protect the rim. They need a guy that can move, help out, get up on screens. Uh, and then offensively, he's going to get on the offensive glass, uh, get the garbage buckets. He moves without the ball. He'll get to the spots. He'll dunk it. Uh, he's not a guy that really spreads the floor a lot, but that's okay because he does so many other things really well. Sure. Guys, quickly, quick. before we shut this down, you know, you look at the guys on the floor. Other than maybe a few guys, a handful of guys, all those other guys are playing for something. They're playing yeah. for careers. They're playing for contracts. They're playing for the next phase, potentially, in the NBA. So that hunger and that energy that you see them playing with comes from that. And there's no time to relax. There's no time to sit there and say, I'm good. They play hard because they need to play hard. And as a coach, Leo Jones, you guys know this, when you yeah. have guys who are motivated on their own, you just have to put a game plan out. You know they're going to go after it hard, and these guys did that tonight. All right, guys, great stuff as always. Got to stop you there. Next up for the Raptors tomorrow night in New York against the Knicks, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. You can click to watch our last episode or to subscribe to the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode.